Thank you. A popular gemstone, these are most precious of all. Is this the color of royalty or the color of fall? Ooh, oh, look at that. So this is topaz, but it's not just any topaz. This is the most valuable, the rarest type of topaz, a variety called imperial topaz. The color is what defines it as imperial topaz. So as you can see, it has this yellowish orange, maybe a hint of pinkish orange to its color. A lot of people think of topaz as blue. It can be colorless, it can be actually a lot of different colors, but this is the most valuable variety. Okay, so how did I know this was topaz? The habit of the crystals. Topaz typically has these elongated crystals. They typically have vertical striations on them, and when seen in cross section, they typically have rhombus-shaped forms. I'm gonna try to show this from the top view. So it has somewhat of like an elongated diamond shape to it. And then on the sides, there are things called pinacoids. They're essentially flat planes. Topaz is a fluorosilicate of aluminum with hydroxyl. And the interesting thing about that is the fluorine and the hydroxyl group are actually volatile elements. And so they're relatively rare in gemstone formulas. Topaz forms at the last stage as magma is cooling into igneous rock. Most topazes have type 1 clarity. The exception to that is imperial topaz, which has type 2 clarity, meaning that you should expect to see some eye visible inclusions. So one of my favorite topics is the cause of color in gemstones. Imperial topaz has an interesting cause of color. So brown and yellow topaz are caused by something called color centers. That's a generic term for a type of defect in the crystal structure that causes a specific absorption of certain wavelengths of light, which then produces color. Pink topaz is caused by the impurity chromium. And so interestingly, orange topaz is caused by a combination of color centers and chromium. Some topaz is heat treated to remove the color centers to get more of that peachy pink color. Imperial topaz is interesting from a color perspective because the dominant color typically is orange, but you have a lot of variation within what people consider imperial topaz. I particularly really like a super peachy pink orange. Some people like the strictly orange hue. Pinkish imperial topaz first was the most favorited type of topaz. Now typically if you say imperial topaz, people will think of a dominant orange hue with some pinks or some yellows included in it. There are three places in the world that are famous for imperial topaz. Really one is the most notable locality and that's Ouro Preto in the Minas Gerais region of Brazil. The other notable locality is on the border of Russia and Kazakhstan. There's a little bit of a battle between the countries in terms of where the name imperial topaz came from. So a lot of people say that in the 18th century, imperial topaz was found in the Ural Mountains in Russia. And so this famous source of topaz that the Russians were very proud of was named in honor of the Tsar of Russia and actually only allowed royals to wear imperial topaz. Alternatively, there is a school of thought that it came from the Brazilians. And so at the time of the discovery, Brazil was still a colony of Portugal and the Portuguese royalty really valued the imperial topaz, that deep color. And so some people say that it was named in honor of the Portuguese imperial family. So I don't know what to make about all of that. However, there is a common theme in that even the royals appreciate this fine color and the countries where it's found really value their natural resources. The other locality is in Zambia. There's the mine in Zambia where Imperial Topaz has been found. Most of these specimens come from Brazil and typically the finest specimens you see on the market today are going to be from Brazil. This is actually an incredibly fine specimen of imperial topaz. This specimen comes from Zambia.
And the interesting thing about this is it's hoppered state. So a hoppered crystal is defined by faster growing edges than the interior. And the reason why that happens is because the edges have a greater electrical pool. And so you can see that the interior is actually somewhat hollow. If you've seen bismuth crystals, if you've seen halite crystals, those often have like a tiered outwardly growing crystal shape. Topaz doesn't typically form in a hoppered shape, which makes this piece particularly unique. If you want to know more about hoppered growth, we actually did a video about it, so you can watch that here. Thank you. Okay, so we have some faceted topazes. Oh my goodness. So this is interesting. We'll talk about this in a second. So we have a pear shape. I would actually say it has a dominant pink hue with some orange undertones. These are part of JTV's President's Collection, and so they have these nifty little cards for us. This is an 8.88 carat pear-shaped stone mined in Brazil. These are untreated topazes. They're a matched pair. So you can see actually the variation in color that Imperial Topaz can provide. One is pretty pink, the other set is pretty orange. Both of these are sold at JTV as Imperial Topaz. So again, there's a range of what is considered an acceptable Imperial Topaz color. And a lot of it comes down to what the market is wanting at the time. The people choose, right? So if more people value that deep orange color, that's gonna be generally considered the most valuable. If for whatever reason, the pinkish variety would become more desired, then the price of that would go up. I don't know the prices on these, but we can include the links in the description so you can check them out. It's really cool actually to see a rough specimen next to a faceted specimen because you can see how the rough is going to dictate the shape of the fasted. So topazes are typically formed in elongated prism crystal forms. And so therefore the fasted stones that come out of them are typically elongated. So you can see even with this pear shape and with these rectangularly shaped fasted stones are both super elongated. And you're gonna see a lot of imperial topaz in that elongated form when fasted. Topaz is actually a fairly common stone blue colorless those prices are not going to be particularly expensive imperial topaz on the other hand is much more valuable much more expensive it's not uncommon to have a faceted imperial topaz that is at a thousand dollars a carat i've seen some that are in the three thousand dollar per carat range and so there's something for everybody in the topaz family another interesting fact about topaz is that it takes a very high polish. Some people even say it is slippery to the touch. I don't really want to test seeing that these are not stones that I own and I don't want them to slip out of my hands, but I can confirm that they are kind of like a watery, smooth, silky texture when you feel them. Okay, so this is actually kind of a sad story. So this is actually a topaz. It would have been considered an imperial topaz. It's almost 75 carats. You can see we had it graded at a lab and the picture here shows that it used to be this brownie yellowish color. However, this is a good case study in the instability of the color of topaz. So as we've talked about before, topaz can be commonly treated. It's commonly heat treated and irradiated. And some treatments, a lot of treatments, particularly for imperial topaz, are not stable. So you have to be careful. Don't display your topaz in direct sunlight. Don't expose it for a long time in direct sunlight. That is so sad. Okay, so for all of you November babies, imperial topaz is a birthstone for November. But for those of you born in December, blue topaz is one of the birthstone options for December babies. Usually imperial topaz is found in relatively small carat weight sizes. So 510 carats is going to be an impressive imperial topaz. 
Some of these are very fine imperial topaz specimens. However, there is one really famous imperial topaz in the gem industry, and that is something called the Imperial Flame, created by a famous lapidary named Alexander Christ. This 332 carat imperial topaz is shaped like a gorgeous burning flame. And like these imperial topazes, came out of the Oro Preto mines in Brazil. So I have to say Imperial Topaz is certainly my favorite type of topaz, but we're gonna toss to Rob and he's gonna tell us a little bit more about a different type of topaz. Here we go. Check out these heavy metal colors. Let's see. <laughs> what color isn't that? I think I know what we're looking at here. This is Mystic Topaz. It does not come out of the ground looking like this. It requires a little bit of a treatment, which is where the clue comes in. Mystic Topaz gets its color from titanium. It's not titanium in the stone. It's a process called chemical vapor deposition, or CVD, where titanium is extremely heated to the point where it vaporizes, and then it's deposited on the surface of the stone, a microscopic, thin, thin, teeny tiny, imperceptible layer of titanium coats this entire stone. It interferes with the light on the way in and on the way out to create this absolute rainbow of purples and greens. There's a little bit of blue in there, some flashes of pink and stuff. And then we have this cube, which is just trippier than anything to look at. He put this in front of the right person and they won't talk for about an hour. I might be the right person. It's a, there's a different color every single direction that you look at this. In, in this direction, it's practically colorless but in this direction, it's violently blue. Personally, I'm a fan of Mystic Topaz. I bought my mom a pair of earrings to wear, and so she, she likes it as well. It first appeared in Hong Kong in 1998, and it's actually become quite popular. You can find Mystic Topaz in all kinds of jewelry. So Mystic Topaz is relatively new, but coating gemstones is not. It's been done for a very, very long time. They obviously wouldn't vaporize titanium, but they would vaporize maybe candles. Simply by applying a thin wax coating to a gemstone, you could improve its luster and also help protect it from liquid damage, especially if it's a more porous gemstone. So that technique was used on turquoise, jade, and also sometimes pearls. Mystic Topaz has a couple of different industry names. One such name is uh, used to describe this more pinkish body colored gemstone. It's called Azotic Topaz. And I believe that's a name created by a company, it's like a brand name of some kind, that uses their own coating process, so they get to call it what they want. You might be wondering about if it's this thin, if it's this microscopic, how durable is it? It's actually surprisingly durable. It can be scratched, but it's more durable than you would think. Let's take a closer look at this cube, which is just all over the place. I would like to have this. Okay, so for a closer look, I want you all to take a look at this specimen. I really like the particular hue of orange in here. I love the crystal shape, so tell us what you think. comments, which is your favorite, Imperial Topaz or Mystic Topaz? There are so many other types of topaz. So if you want to learn more, head over to our new website, gemstones.com, and you can learn all about the different types of topaz. We'll include a link down in the description. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss out on our future videos. Thanks for watching.